Today we're going to continue on with our, our uh, story of Nehemiah and seeing what God's teaching us through this amazing dude. So I arrived in Jerusalem. Three days later, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us except the donkey I was riding. After dark, I went out through the valley gate, past the jackal's well, and over to the dung gate to inspect the broken walls and burned gates. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but my donkey couldn't get through the rubble. So though it was still dark, I went up to the Kidron Valley instead, inspecting the wall before I turned back and entered again at the valley gate. The city officials did not know I had been out there or what I was doing, for I had not yet said anything to anyone about my plans. I had not yet spoken to the Jewish leaders, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or anyone else in the administration. But now I said to them, you know very well what troubles we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. And they replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. Well, you know, as we uh, read that section of scripture, I'm excited to read it because I just, the dude is amazing for one thing in his heart and his vision. Kept it to himself until the proper time, but he inspected. And as you listen to that story, you see that he rode around that whole city and stuff and he couldn't even get through with a donkey, any area to re-enter the city except the one that he went out in. So it kind of gives us a picture of the absolute you know, destruction that was actually there, that it was like in shambles. And he was like, let's do it. <laughs> and he, he said, let's rebuild this. Let's do something with the mess that's all around us. And the thing I love about him is that he wasn't discouraged by what he saw. And the reality is what he saw was pretty messed up, but it didn't discourage him, nor did it stop him from sharing his vision about what he felt God was asking him to do. So today, church, here's something I want to share with you. When we look around our society today and we see the mess that it is, we see the, the issues with gender identity in our, our youth and our young people. We see the LVGTQ. We see the social unrest. We see all these political unrest. We see the mess that's going on in our country around us. And, you know, it, it can look pretty intimidating and it's like it's beyond repair. It's beyond hope. But our God is an amazing God, and he is a, the God of the impossible. And so as we look, we don't want to be discouraged. We may see the rubble. We see the brokenness that's all around us, but God's bigger than all of that. And he's looking for some people that are willing to do something about it. And that's why I love Nehemiah. And as he shares his vision, everybody's like, let's do this thing, man. Let's start doing it. So, hey, whatever's going on around you, I want you to know God is the God of the impossible. He's called us, and he's saying, will you? Be the one to do something about the mess that's around you. Let's be that church. God bless you today.